My wife, 31 female, and I, 30 male, were together for three years and married for one. We were both very athletic people. We actually met in a gym and started flirting immediately. It was so easy to be around her and talk. I never talked so much before I met her. We became best friends and lovers. When we got married, our parents were just as excited as us. My parents paid for most of our wedding and helped us purchase furniture and things to start off. A new gym opened by our house, so we got memberships right away. I was really optimistic and hopeful at this point in my life. I really had no idea how challenging marriage could be. After just one year of marriage, it was like the infatuation wore off and we started to get irritated with each other. She felt like I wasn't opening up or communicating enough, but sometimes I just wasn't in the mood to talk. Nothing was bothering me, I just didn't have anything to say. We got through this once by talking things out, acknowledging our differences, and promising to focus more on each other's needs instead of our own. Then my wife suddenly started having her gym trainer over to our house twice a week. Her reasoning was that she'd hit a plateau, and bringing the trainer to her would help her to reach her new goals. Well, I wasn't born yesterday. We didn't have weights or machines in our house. I knew our relationship was getting older and my wife was naturally a very flirty woman. I didn't want to be overly controlling and tell her I didn't want him in our house. I just wanted to see what she'd do with this freedom and trust. We had a hired security guard at our home, so I didn't feel overly anxious when I had to go to work. After the second week she had her trainer at the house, I arrived home and asked him if my wife was behaving. He just shrugged uncomfortably. I asked him what he thought was going on and he said he couldn't give me a fair guess because each time she had the trainer over, she sent him on a break. I was appalled. My wife was dismissing the man that could tell me if she was cheating. I asked if I could pay him extra to keep an eye on my wife, even if he had to lie to her and pretend he was going on break. He agreed. It was nearly summer, so my wife had the side windows of the house open on the day our security guard snapped pictures for me. I was at work four days after I asked him to watch her when I received them. It was like a slap in the face. I didn't actually expect my wife to be sleeping with her trainer, but my small suspicion and bribery led to the brutal truth. I was being cheated on by a shallow, flirty, sleazy woman that I tried to call my wife. I trusted her and gave her everything I could offer, but it wasn't enough for her to try and live an honorable life with me as her husband. All these thoughts and more rushed through my head as I printed the picture evidence and drove home from work. I thanked the security guard with a wave the moment before I unlocked and shoved the door open. They must have heard the door unlocking because they quickly got into positions that looked like training. With trembling hands and a faltering voice, I showed them the printed pictures of what they just did minutes earlier. The trainer's face turned ghostly white. He didn't want me to kill him, so ran out instantly and sped away in his car. My wife dropped her knees. She said this was the first and only major mistake she'd ever made in her life. She promised that if I forgave her for this, she would become the perfect example of what a wife should be to her husband. I completely doubted this, but I'm not a very expressive person, and the level of emotion I was feeling was too much to bear. I reverted back to spy mode, knowing I wouldn't stay married to this woman. No matter what, she would suffer for this. I told her that only a loyal, good wife deserves the things I provided for her, like jewelry, a hairstylist, a car, high-end clothing and shoes, everything. So I packed it all away and locked it in the trunk of my car. It took all day and my wife was sobbing almost the entire time. Even though she swore to do everything I asked of her, she didn't help me. I think she might have suspected I was going to divorce her, but she was too afraid to ask. She also didn't want to tell her parents anything about what was going on, because they raised her right. They wouldn't be dashing to her rescue just because she let another man inside her home. No responsible or honorable woman does that. She slept on the couch for a week without her normal routine or privileges. She actually cleaned a lot in the hopes that would earn my forgiveness. While she scrubbed the floors like Cinderella, I plopped divorce papers down. She really lost it. When she realized none of her begging and sobbing worked on me, she left the house to call her parents. They came and got her, but only long enough to lecture her, buy her some Walmart clothes, and bring her back to my house. It was humorous and frustrating at the same time.
Eventually, the divorce was done. Through the process, she was sleeping on the couch of our home until she was ordered to leave. She tried asking if she was entitled to half of my business, and the judge laughed at her. He shook his head and told her she had a lot of growing up to do, that she lost a great man and provider because of her actions. She didn't even have enough patience in our marriage to ensure she was entitled to half my business upon divorce. She made it clear that she wasn't very bright, and she only thought about herself. OP, I am so sorry your wife went behind your back to sleep with her trainer. She brought him to your house while you worked for no reason other than to start an affair. A mature woman would never flirt or put herself in a situation to be alone with another man. Marriage has enough drama and tribulations without unnecessary temptation. Two people with individual minds must be willing to be honest and do everything in their power to have empathy and consideration for the person they married. It's lucky you had a security guard to clue you in on what was happening sooner rather than later. Your wife didn't deserve the life of security and love you had in store for her, and thankfully you weren't married long enough for her to get any part of what you worked so hard for. Thank you for sharing your story. I wish you all the best. Now let's get into our second story for today. My wife and I were married for a long time. She was never very fond of fishing. My father raised me with a fishing rod in hand, by the water, or on a boat. So she went along with me sometimes, but for the most part she didn't want me to go. After years of marriage we learned about compromising, so we let the other person come and go as they pleased as long as we kept each other in the loop. My wife would often go visit her mother or siblings. I would go fishing. I met a man at the lake who also liked to fish. He was great at it, and always came well prepared, with drinks he was willing to share. Sometimes his wife came along with him, and she wasn't bad either. I'll refer to them as Mr. and Mrs. Fisherman. When I told my wife I met a fisherman friend that brought his wife with him sometimes, she was instantly jealous and worried that I had flirted with Mrs. or liked her. I was too mature to feed into this, so I just laughed and told my wife I thought she was cute for being possessive of me. I had no idea she was about to ruin my life. She wanted to start tagging along on my fishing trips so she could get to know the people I hung out with. I think the four of us went on about six fishing trips together. In between those were times where I went alone or just me and Mr. Fisherman would go. On a night when I fished alone, I got a text from Mrs. Fisherman. She asked me if I was with her husband because he told her his plans were to go fishing with me. I told her no, I wasn't, which was decidedly out of character for him. He was usually very true to his word. I waited another hour and 15 minutes before packing up and going home. I was surprised my wife wasn't there. I called her several times with no answer. She returned home after 20 minutes, breathless. She said she didn't expect me back so soon and that she'd gone to a Zumba class. This was pretty hard to believe. My wife did Zumba occasionally, but the class never went this late and it was far enough of a drive that she should have caught her breath by now. I wasn't sure how to approach her about it. We'd been married for 48 years, so the fact that I was suspicious of her was devastating. I just asked her if she knew where Mr. Fisherman was. As soon as I asked, I felt my phone vibrate with a text. My wife's heart was pounding, but she tried to be as normal as possible as she told me she hadn't seen him. She couldn't look me in the eye. I went upstairs to take a shower and found Mr. Fisherman's hat. Puzzled and growing concerned, I could only think the worst. I pulled out my phone and saw the text from Mrs. Fisherman. She said Mr. Fisherman just got home and he was acting weird. He said he lost his hat at the lake with me, but she already knew I didn't see him that evening. I sent her a picture of his hat laying on the floor of my bedroom. It was easy to see the bed was made in a hurry. We were disturbed at this point, figuring they must have slept with each other secretly. It was slightly easier to go through this with someone that was experiencing the same betrayal. They'd been married 43 years. I wouldn't wish this on anyone, but surround yourself with people. Talk to people about what you're going through, because I never expected to lose the love of my life to something so needless and avoidable. After we grieved a little, we decided the next logical step would be to catch them in the act, and since we were certain they were seeing each other behind our backs, we went ahead and prepared divorce papers. I was at work three days later, with divorce papers ready, when Mrs. Fisherman texted me, 
saying Mr. Fisherman said he was going fishing, but she didn't believe him. A follow-up text said she went to the lake shortly after he left, and he was nowhere in sight. We met outside my house and quietly unlocked the door. We heard noises upstairs, so we ran up with racing hearts and found them having sex. I had to look away while they freaked out and ended the session, frantically starting to dress. My wife was already crying. AP just kept saying Mrs. Fisherman's name, staring at her as he dressed, like if he looked away she'd disappear. They were both realizing how bad they messed up. They were just caught betraying us, the two people who loved and supported them for most of our lives. This level of betrayal and the feeling you get is indescribable. I had no idea how to behave. I was embarrassed, so I just threw the divorce papers at my wife's feet and left. Mrs. Fisherman ran out of the house with her cheating husband, AP, following close behind. They were divorced by the time my wife and I were. We had adult children that were so disappointed in her, their relationship was never the same. They were as surprised and hurt as I was. She moved into a place 45 minutes away. The rest of her life didn't compare to what she lost. Everything she lived for for the past 48 years was gone or tainted. I'm grateful for my kids calling me and keeping me involved with family affairs. Let this be a lesson to all. Cheating only brings pain and regret. OP, I can't believe your wife cheated on you with a married friend you met fishing. It started as something fun and calm to do together with another couple who were also married for a long time. Your ex turned it into an unexpected opportunity to bring distrust and the end of your marriage. It's a shame that they couldn't resist this temptation for the betterment of their relationships and the lives they built with each of you. Because of this senseless infidelity, your wife's relationship with her kids has changed for the worse. I'm glad you had support during this and after the fact as well. Do your best to remain hopeful and treat others the way you'd like to be treated. Honesty and compassion are main ingredients and in everyday practice in a meaningful, successful marriage. I hope you are able to heal from this. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.